little butterflies that are flying around inside of you. The minute you open your mouth, they're going to be beautiful as you offer your gifts to us. So when you come forward, please use the microphones, and um, we're so glad that you're here. And uh, I would just like to, before we begin, uh, ask all the scouts who are here to stand. And now, and now I would like anyone who has ever been a part of scouting to stand up. Thank you. This is indeed a wonderful and important program, and we at the Wilmington United Methodist Church are so honored that the scouting ministry is a part of our, our life. So... Let us worship our God. Your love is as high as the heavens, O oh God. Your faithfulness soars through the skies. Your righteousness reaches the power of peaks. You are just as the depth of the sea. We shelter beneath your wings. We feast on the food you provide. Hymn 126. I don't, are the screens working? Yes. Okay. Well, we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way, 126.
Please join in the opening prayer. O oh God, you are always true to us in love, and we are left wanting in our faithfulness to you and to one another, for our forgetting of the poor and the broken, for our failure to cherish creation. Give us life, O oh God, to change and enable us to change, that we may live. Amen. Come on up. Come on up. We're going to play a game. So you've got to get on this side of me so you can see me. Oh, very good. Very good. Have you ever, ever, ever played the game Simon Says? Yeah? Yeah? Would you like to play? A li- but we're going to play it a little differently this morning. I'm going to change up the rules a little bit. I'm going to say, Simon says, and do. So, when I say something and do it, you should say it and do it with me. If I only say, Simon says, then you shouldn't do it with me, okay? Do you think you understand the rules? Yeah. You think you got those? Yeah. All right. You seem pretty confident. I like it. You got it? Oh, you guys are great. Simon says, clap your hands. Simon says, stomp your feet. Simon says, and Simon does, Stomp your feet. Yeah. Simon says, clap your hands. Simon says, and Simon does, stomp his feet. Yeah. Very, very good. I'm very proud of you. you. You played that game very, very, very well. Yeah, yeah. One of the important things to remember about the Christian faith and what we believe as God's children is that we say things and we do things. So that's why I added that little step to a very familiar game, because Jesus says things, and then Jesus wants us to do them. Do you think you can remember that? Yeah. Okay, very good. I think you will too. Shall we say a prayer together? Okay. Yeah. You'll repeat after me, right? Oh God, oh God. thank you for Jesus, and for the things that he says, and the things that he does, and help us always to remember, and always to do what you've asked. Amen. Wasn't this fun? Have a great time in Sunday school. I don't do Sunday school. Okay. Well, then have a great time in worship. The peace of the Lord be with you. Well, before we continue with the rest of this wonderful celebration and we are enriched by our, uh, the gift of music, uh, I do have an announcement to share with you that we got a very sudden word that Teresa, the person who's been our nursery care person, is moving and uh, she won't be with us and she's leaving in a, a couple of weeks. So we have very short notice to cover something that's very important. SPRC has put together a sign-up list And what we'd like to do is cover, see if we can get some volunteers to cover the nursery for the next couple of weeks until we're able to have a more permanent solution. So I'm going to ask that we pass this through the sanctuary, and if you would be willing to help out for a Sunday or two, um, put your name on the list, and uh, we can talk more about that. So, and I'll give it to you first, so. (laughs) We're ready for you, my friend.
Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be, you to myself, so that where I, oh, uh, also. And you know the way to the pl place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me and has seen the Father, how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the words themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if, I'm, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When all will be one, God will reign, and we'll walk with each sisters and Amen. Won't you please be seated? So Jesus and Muhammad walk into a bar. I know it sounds more like a joke than the beginning of a sermon, but I'll tell you a joke anyway. 
Jesus and Muhammad walk into a bar, and Jesus is very gracious and allows Muhammad to walk in first, and they sit together, and the uh, person comes and asks what they'd like, and Jesus defers, and Muhammad orders first, ordering a glass of water, saying that Muslims do not drink alcohol. Jesus said, well, I'll have a glass of water as well, but could you put mine in a wine glass? <laughs> I hope my sermon's better than the joke. <laughs> this morning, I would like to tell you just a little bit about the history of Islam, and then I would like to touch very lightly, almost superficially, on what it is that Muslims believe about Jesus. And then lastly, I want to suggest that there is a way to embrace all of Scripture and to embrace our neighbors, even those of a different faith or no faith at all. And just because today's Scout Sunday, I would like to tell you that uh, there are a few mosques in the United States. Mosques are the houses of worship for people of the Islamic faith that actually sponsor Boy Scout troops. I read about a few in Ohio and one in Texas. So I'm glad for that. And I learned something else, and I was very pleased to learn this, particularly because we have so many people in our congregation who participate in Freemasonry. I read through the, the rules on the Freemasons website, and I found these remarkable words. While Islam does not accept Freemasonry, Freemasonry accepts Islam. I read further that in some of the more repressive Islamic countries, Freemasonry is a vehicle and a means for people to come together and help one another live well. And I was so proud to read that and so thankful for the Freemasons in our congregation. It is uh, a remarkable thing, and we should all be proud. So Muhammad is the founder of the Islamic faith. He lives about 600 years after Jesus. He's on the Arabian Peninsula, and at that time in history, the Arabian Peninsula is in a great deal of tribal conflict. There's no organized society for that area, simply small tribes that were constantly at war with each other. I believe that Muhammad and many of the people on the Arabian Peninsula at that time period had conflicting views about Christianity and Judaism. On the one hand, they deeply admired a belief in one universal God that is a God that is not bound to a tribe in tribal warfare, but a God that is over all of humanity and a God that asks humanity to live together in peace and to treat one another with ethically and with justice. So the people of the Arabian Peninsula in the days of Muhammad admired that. But on the other hand, they had experienced a fair amount of violence from Christian soldiers. And one scholar suggests that for these people to convert to either Christianity or Judaism would be to embrace the religious faith of their oppressors. So what they did was fashion another way to conceive of a universal 
God who asks for ethical and just living. So Islam was born. Now, I am really not an expert on the beliefs of Islam, but I've been guided by the work of Mustafa, Mustafa Ekol. He wrote a book entitled The Islamic Jesus. And in his book, he says that many Muslims believe many of the same things about Jesus that Christians do. The main difference is that Muslims would never say that Jesus is the Son of God. And Mustafa offers an insight into that. About a thousand years before the rise of Islam, Alexander the Great conquered the Arabian Peninsula. And if you're, any, if you're interested in history, you would know that it was a violent conquering. The Macedonian armies were cruel, often slaughtering anyone that would resist. And when Alexander the Great conquers the Arabian Peninsula, he calls himself the Son of God not the son of Yahweh of the Jewish tradition, but he calls himself the son of God, the son of Zeus, the god of the Greek pantheon. So Mustafa suggests that resistance to the term son of God might come more from a horrible experience than from any type of theological reservations. Now, I do not know if that's uh, widely accepted by many scholars, but I think it's an insight that what we experience and what we go through in our history very often shapes how we see the world. So Mustafa goes on more to say that Muslims believe that Jesus was born of a virgin Muslims believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Muslims believe that Jesus is the Word of God, that He died, that He rose again. And the Quran encourages Muslims to study both the Older Testament of the, of the Hebrew people, the Christian scriptures of the New Testament, as well as the Quran. Often things we do not hear of. Now, his book is delightful, and if you'd like to read it, I'd encourage you to do so, and I'd be willing to lend my copy out to anyone who's um, so inclined. But let me give you the last paragraph. I think you'll find it quite beautiful. As Muslims... We have disagreements with both Jews and Christians, but we have major agreements as well. With Jews, we agree a lot on God. With Christians, we agree that Jesus was born of a virgin, that He was the Messiah, that He is the Word of God. And I love his very last sentence. Surely we do not worship Jesus like Christians do. Yet we can still follow him. In fact, given our grim malaise and Jesus' shining wisdom, we need to follow him. Now, there's a whole lot in Christian-Muslim relationships, and I do not pretend to be an expert, and I haven't told you everything that there is to know. But I hope I've shed a little light on the topic. And as I do so, I 
want to do that, share these thoughts in light of the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. That's the chapter that we heard part of today, and that's the chapter that holds the verse, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through me. And I wanted to do so because oftentimes that one verse has been a roadblock for faithful, loving Christians who want to embrace their neighbors, but that just sort of gets in the way. This morning, I'd like to suggest for you that there's a way that we can appreciate and hold that text with great seriousness. You have to read chapters 14, 15, and 16 all at once. John does not make anything simple. It's a long, complicated story, and it all unfolds on the night before Jesus dies. And in those three chapters, Jesus is talking to his most intimate followers, explaining to them that he's going to be executed, that he is going to die. And the disciples are filled with loss and fear and separation, anxiety. They have given up everything in their life to follow Jesus and Jesus is about to be executed. And they're fearful. They're freaking out. Separation, anxiety is exploding within their spirits. They wonder what will become of the one that they have loved. What will happen to the connection that has been so life-giving for them? So in that context, these words are a whisper of hope into a fearful heart and not a grand universal theological concept. They are meant as comfort, not as an indictment to folks who believe differently. One scholar had put it this way. Jesus says, no, fear, estrangement, and separation, these are not the last words. Instead, Jesus invited his followers to dwell in him, even as he dwelt in God. I am the way, and no one of you, my fearful friends, knows God apart from what I have embodied for you. Stay close. Keep faith. This is not a threat. It is a promise. Well, thank you for listening to me. I hope I've either reminded you of something you already knew or given you some useful information. I trust I've communicated that Christians and Muslims, while we see Jesus differently, we're really not all that far apart. We may be very different religions for different reasons, but we're more like cousins than enemies. And mostly, I hope I've shown you a way to embrace both the strong words of Holy Scripture and the beauty in your Muslim neighbor. Amen. As a forgiven and forgiving people, let us offer our gifts to God.
Almighty God, accept these gifts which we, your people, offer, expressions of our love and of our longing. Bless what we offer and guide who we become. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Won't you please be seated? We do have a number of announcements to share this morning, but I hope you will go through your bulletin and... Uh, Read it and be mindful of those, um, those opportunities and those announcements that are, that are important and find ways that you can uh, connect and be a part of um, the life of our church. So Betsy has a word to share with us. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Betsy Peterson and I am currently the chair of the Outreach Betsy? Committee. Betsy, I'm Betsy, you need, to get, you need to move the stool and get closer to the microphone. Okay. I don't think my family would ever say I was hard to hear, but that's okay. <laughs> Your outreach committee met on February the 3rd to discuss and to allocate funds raised during our 21st year of Christmas tree sales. Um, many, many thanks to all of you who make this such a successful event. Whether you helped us to unload trees, whether you helped us to cut the sleeves off of them, whether you helped to, um, on our sales hours in some cold weather, whether you helped to um, hand out candy canes and wish our guests a very Merry Christmas, um, all of it is greatly appreciated and has resulted in our ability to dis distribute almost $9,000 to the following agencies. We are sending money to AIM, which is Access and Mandatory, Wilmington, Mass., the Wilmington Food Pantry, the Burlington Food Pantry, the Bill Ricca Food Pantry, Lowell Transitional Living Center, which is in Lowell, Mass., Camp Aldersgate, uh, Rhode Island, Lazarus House, Lawrence, Mass., Boston Area Rape Crisis Center in Boston, Amas, which is in Haverhill, Respond, which is Somerville, Boston Healthcare for the Homeless, My Brother's Table in Lynn, House of Hope in Lowell, N68, Wilmington Chapter, 
the Charlie Foundation out of Nashville, Tennessee, of which our own um, Addie Solomon is participating. Um, we had three um, UMCOR programs, that we, and UMCOR stands for United Methodist Committee on Relief. Clean Water in Nicaragua, and Sustainable Development and Recovery, which is global, and Disaster Response, which is also globally. Um, I will post these agency names and a brief description of what they do on the Outreach Bulletin Board. But again, our many, many thanks for all of your support. Um, please keep in mind, none of this would be possible without your help. You are most definitely making the difference in the lives of so many others. Thank you again. Thank you. And I hope you found this invitation for next Sunday. Uh, we're going to have our Futures Committee is going to um, uh, share with you some of their good work and some of their, uh, their hopes and dreams for the future of our church before they uh, send it on to the Administrative Board for adoption. They want to touch base and, and just uh, uh, make sure that you, th they feel you listened clearly and, and have responded to those requests that they've been gathering for quite some time. So next Sunday, uh, after church, and we're going to do it around the Oscar theme. So is there anything else we need to tell people about that? It should be fun. <laughs> and if you have a tuxedo, wear it. <laughs> Warren, I saw your hand. I would like to take a moment now and honor and recognize and thank uh, Dennis. Dennis has been our interim musician for quite some time. We're about this close to hiring a new music director, but we didn't want to miss the opportunity, Dennis, to tell you how much we have appreciated your leadership and your, your playing and your faithfulness. And uh, so would you come forward here? And uh, um, Dennis has a few more Sundays with us, but we don't want to miss the opportunity to say thank you. And um, we have, I'm going to read the card. No, you sailed it, so all right. <laughs> they wrote you a very, very nice card that I was going to read to you, but the envelope is sealed. So it is an expression from this whole congregation. It's like the Oscars. It's the Oscars, yes, <laughs> except, except we know you won. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of a grateful congregation, we say thank you, and uh, we know that uh, no matter who we hire as a music director, there'll always be times when we'll call on you and need your wonderful gifts, and we hope that uh, we look forward to those days. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for always making me feel welcome. <laughs> I just wanted to try out this mic. <laughs> <laughs> I invite us now to spend some time uh, sharing our, our joys and our concerns with one another. And uh, would you be so kind as to... How can we pray for each other in this week? Yes. Roger. Yeah. Roger, it is so good to see you and uh, pray for your continued healing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Very good, and thank you all for your, for your leadership and pulling it together. It was a marvelous day, although I left before I ate anything. <laughs> Warren? I'm a neighbor Rita, her family passed away Friday. Prayers for Warren's neighbor Rita and her family circle as, uh, as she passed away on Friday. Yes, please. Prayers for Laura, and she's hospitalized. Prayers for the Moore family circle of Wakefield as uh, a loved one is uh, very ill and uh, close to death. Please. 
Woo. Yet to be named. <laughs> well, congratulations. Please. Uh -huh. Prayers for Ken under hospice care. Roger, I saw your hand. I didn't, I didn't, can someone help me? There was a mall shooting last night? Yeah, in Thailand. Yeah. Thank you, Roger, we shall pray. Indeed. I invite us to pray. Together, O oh Lord, we pray for one another. As we've heard the joys and concerns of this gathering, we entrust each one to you, knowing that you are far more caring than we are, that you know more than we can possibly grasp, and you can do far more than we can imagine. And even as we acknowledge that, we offer ourselves to be your agents, to speak the word of calm hope, to speak the word of righteous indignation, and to be the bearer of hope. Together we pray for those who suffer and those who are troubled. The violence in our world, we want it to stop. The hurt, the mistrust, bind us together. We pray for the world and for its peoples, especially for our own country. Amid all the difficult exchanges, remind us that we are bound together by a noble hope, by a rich aspiration for human community. Together we pray for the church universal, that wherever anyone is known by your name, each one would live up to the highest ideals expressed in the gentle Jesus of Nazareth, who loved so sacrificially and who pointed beyond the difficulty to your eternal word and your eternal way. And so now we pray as we were taught saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shall we stand and sing our closing hymn? Lead on, O cloud of presence.
And now may that peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of the one who created, who redeems, and who sustains us be with us now and always. Amen. It's okay. I, try, I try to get your attention to that. Yeah.